I've been intrigued by building with straw bales ever since I learned that they could make a super insulated wall system look really beautiful and using natural materials could be a way to build a house for dirt cheap. What's the difference between a straw bale home and a conventional stick built home? What's up everybody? Welcome to our series on building a house with straw bales, start to finish. This is Heirloom Builders and I'm Logan Parker. I've been building energy efficient homes and custom cabinetry for the last 16 years and I absolutely love geeking out on all of the details that make a home not only look good but also function really well. Have you ever heard the story of the three little pigs? The little lazy pig had built his house out of straw and that didn't work out so well for him. The big bad wolf huffed and puffed and blew his house down. But the hardworking little pig took the time to build himself a brick house. And no matter how much that big bad wolf tried, he couldn't blow down that little pig's brick house. So why would anyone want to build a home with straw bales? Are we missing something here? The short answer is yes. There's a big difference between the lazy little pig's thatched wiki up straw house and a house built with straw bales. In short, the lazy little pig's house was just a thin layer of straw, just enough to give him some shade. But a straw bale home is built with 18 inch wide compressed straw bales with one inch of plaster on both the inside and outside surfaces. It's actually built more like the little pig's brick house. And yet with a dense straw bale core, it's super insulated and cozy warm inside. Have you ever thought about building your own home? Built well enough to hold the heat in the winter? and comfortable in the hot summer months? Most homes are built with two by four walls and fiberglass bat insulation. The main problem with this strategy is that you can only fit so much insulation in a skinny little wall. And if it's not installed properly, it's hardly effective at all. 30% of home energy loss comes from air leakage. And when you quickly stuff fiberglass bats into a two by four wall, like most contractors do, there's tons of gaps and places for cold air to leak inside your home. You really have to take the time to get a good fit or it won't perform like it's supposed to. A good alternative is to frame your walls with two by sixes instead of two by fours to get a 50% thicker wall and more space for insulation. And then better yet, fill it with dense pack cellulose. To do that, we staple a breathable fabric over the two by six stud walls and packed cellulose fibers, basically recycled paper shreds, into the wall with a heavy duty blower. The dense pack cellulose will eliminate any air gaps and provide a better insulated wall than fiberglass. Mostly because there's no space for air leakage. The problem is that it's time consuming and expensive to staple the fabric and blow in all that insulation. It literally triples the cost of insulating your home. And there's still one other big problem, thermal bridging. If you take an infrared camera and photograph a typical stick framed home, you'll be able to see the two by four studs right through the wall. That's because wood is not a good insulator and heat travels through it really easily. That two by four wood stud is acting like a thermal bridge that's moving heat to the outside air. That's not a good thing, especially since 10 to 20% of your stud wall is wood framing. That's a lot of heat transfer. In order to resist thermal bridging, we use continuous rigid foam or rock wool insulation on the exterior of the home. This stops the heat from transferring through the studs and makes a huge difference in the comfort and thermal performance of your home. But again, the additional detailing, materials, and labor required to build a well insulated 2x4 wall system can really escalate the cost of your home. However, these costs do partially pay for themselves by reducing the need for a large heat and air conditioning system to keep your home cool in the summer and warm in the winter. In addition to the high cost of insulating a 2x4 stick built home, there are many hidden environmental costs. Fiberglass insulation, rigid foam insulation, and even rock wool insulation are toxic to work with, which means you need to wear a respirator to cut and install these materials or run the risk of getting a lung disease. 
producing fiberglass insulation also releases a significant amount of greenhouse gases during the manufacturing process. Making one short ton of fiberglass insulation produces almost a third of a metric ton of greenhouse gases. That's not a good ratio. Conventional building materials also take a lot of energy to produce in the first place. It takes over 5 million BTUs of energy to produce a single short ton of fiberglass. We can do better. We may be willing to set these dreadful statistics about manufacturing of greenhouse gases aside, but we can't ignore the growing number of people that are falling sick due to toxic indoor air quality. Building materials, furnishings, and other household chemicals all release or off-gas toxic chemicals like VOCs or volatile organic compounds. A 1985 study conducted by the EPA found that concentrations of toxic organic compounds were two to five times higher inside the home when compared to outside air. I suppose that number will probably be even higher today. We've got to get away from using all of these chemicals. Our health depends on it. We can do better. Building better homes that off-gas fewer VOCs, consume less energy over their lifetime, and take less energy to build in the first place is a great start. There are a lot of ways to build a better home, but none of them offer as much promise as straw bale building. I've been intrigued by building with straw bales ever since I learned that they could make a super insulated wall system look really beautiful and using natural materials could be a way to build a house for dirt cheap. We've built all kinds of high performance conventional homes with insulation details that perform really well. I love geeking out on how to build things better. We built an airtight home to the rigorous passive house requirement of less than a half an air change per hour. That's insane. We even built the first panelized hempcrete home in North America. And yet nothing excites me more than building with straw bales. In fact, I built my own house with straw bales. I can attest to the strength, the thermal mass, and the amazing insulation value that keeps me cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Straw bales are basically rectangular bricks of insulation that you can stack to make a wall and literally just smear them with mud to create a superior wall system. Think about it. These are the closest things to Legos that you can use to build your home. Except even better, like Legos, straw bales are lightweight and yet easy to move. Yet they're big, so stacking a whole house can easily be done in a single weekend with help from a few friends. A well-built home has two things, a good hat and good shoes. The proverbial hat is a good roof that doesn't leak. And the shoes are the foundation that give a home its sturdy and level base that keeps it out of standing water and high away from pests that live in the ground. Like most homes, a straw bale home sits on a concrete or stone foundation. It can be a monolithic slab foundation if you have a flat level site, or it can utilize a crawl space style concrete black foundation with a wood floor system above, like most homes. The key difference between straw bale building and conventional construction is the wall framing. Although straw bales can indeed be stacked like bricks to directly support the roof framing above, most building codes require a separate wall frame to support your roof. In order to create 18 inch thick straw bale walls, we first anchor 4x4 mud sills onto the foundation to isolate the straw bales from any moisture that might weep up through the concrete. We set the two courses of 4x4s 18 inches apart so that the straw bale sits evenly supported on the two 4x4s. The outer 4x4 mud sill acts as the connection between the foundation and the post and beam framing above. Then we frame with post and beams, similar to the way that many barns are built. The idea is to use as few framing members as necessary to support the roof above. We do this for a couple reasons. First, it's faster and cheaper to frame with fewer pieces. And secondly, it's easier to install the straw bales in between each post when there are fewer posts to cut around. There's a post usually about every six feet or so that rests on top of the exterior 4x4 mud sill and supports the beam above. The purpose of that beam above is to carry the weight of the roof framing. Windows and doors are framed in between, pretty much wherever you want them. Once we have a roof, it's time to send out the invitations to all your friends for the straw bale stacking party. 
Much like the old days when people gathered their friends for a barn raising, we organize a big work party and stack all the bales in a single weekend. The goal is to get all the bales stacked and under cover so they don't get wet. Stacking the bales is pretty easy. First, we hammer 20 penny nails about one inch into the 4x4 mud sill to act as a cleat to hold the straw bale in place. Start at the corner, setting your bales firmly in place on the cleats and work your way towards the middle of the wall, stacking the bales like bricks in a running bond where they overlap on each successive course as you go up the wall. We use a chainsaw to notch out the space in the bale for the framing so it's all flush on the outside. That makes it really easy to keep a straight and plumb wall so long as your framing is straight and plumb. When you reach a window or door opening, just measure the width between the door and retie the bale to a shorter length. We'll get into all these little details when we progress through the build, so don't worry about that for now. It doesn't take long and all the bales are stacked, and all of a sudden you have an insulated wall system. Then all we gotta do is apply the earth and clay plaster to both the inside and outside surfaces. We smear it directly on the bales to seal them up and protect them from rain, pests, and fire. With an 18 inch thick straw bale wall and all the framing members on the outside face, there's absolutely no thermal bridging carrying heat through your framing. And with one inch of earth and clay lime plaster on the inside and outside of the walls, there's no need for drywall, plywood sheathing, or siding that can cause toxic indoor air quality or environmental pollutants. And best yet, Straw bales are cheap and require very minimal energy to produce. One of the most promising things about straw bale construction is that the straw bales are readily available all over the planet. In fact, straw bales are a waste product from the grain industry. After a farmer cuts their field of grain with a combine, harvesting all the nutrient-rich seed heads of the grain, like rice, wheat, or oats, what's left is the leggy stem of that plant. That leggy stem left standing in the field is worthless as food, but it's not trash. It's still good for things like farm animal bedding and garden mulch. So most grain farmers usually have a baler that they can just pull behind their tractor to collect all these cut grain stems or straw and compress them into tightly packed bales of straw, which are shaped like giant building blocks. And it just so happens they're made of material that's not only good insulation, but believe it or not, it helps to moderate indoor air humidity and resist flame spread from fires. And it's even pest resistant by nature. And built like a sandstone castle, even the big bad wolf has no chance of blowing this house down. I feel like every week I see a new type of ingenious 3D printed technology or Lego style house building kit that's hoping to replace conventional building with ease and labor savings. But here's the thing, we don't have to reinvent the wheel here folks. Straw bales are a waste product that can be repurposed into something really practical. They are imperfect, yes. Do they require manual labor? Definitely. But in the age of sky-high lumber prices and robots replacing our jobs, we need manual labor opportunities and simple ways for everyday folks living on basic income to build a decent home with their own two hands. Is building a house with straw bales the best way to build a new home? You decide. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We're building a new house with straw bales for Lynn and Leanne Fogwell, who are starting a new family farm right outside of Siler City, North Carolina. My name's Leanne Fogwell. I'm a VP of R&D for a telecommunications firm out of Canada. Why on earth would you want to build with straw bales? <laughs> I, I want a Why house. Why would you want to? Yeah, that, that question's mine, I know. <laughs> uh, but I want to be able to uh, heat and cool my home by being off-grid if I need to but with straw bale to be able to build my own, you know, insulated buildings myself. So we look at our, our home right now, the one that we're building, as like a beachhead or the base. And from that, now after I learn how to do it, I can go ahead and build other structures, build things out. My goal is to build a better home and give you a leg up. We'll be following this entire straw bale house building project from start to finish. 
sharing what I've learned about building custom homes along the way so you can avoid some of the common pitfalls and save yourself a bunch of time and money figuring it out on your own. So make sure to subscribe to our channel on your way out and click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on this exciting series. Thanks for watching. Until the next one, peace out.